All right, welcome back. It's still the Independence Day special right here on Plus TV Africa. And to our next uh, a guest uh, who is here to talk about the Nigerian educational system or the Nigerian, Nigerian education system, we have uh, Olu Dare Akin Laja. Uh, he's a CEO, uh, OARND uh, company transformation strategist as well. Is that a research and development company? Oh, fantastic. And you are in, in the education sector as well? Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, as you sat down in his book, I just knew uh. one. And you, <laughs> all right, Messi and I are glad to indeed have you. Um, uh, we'll start with, uh, of course, the president's speech gives us talking points. I know you told me off air that he gave you nothing to talk about, but um, he says that he's pained. You know, when he looks at, he thinks about the ASU strike, yeah. you know, it, 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 it causes him pain. Um, what are your thoughts on the president's feelings? And I know he said this, something similar when he met with stakeholders in the education sector. You know, he said he's, he's not happy about it. But I'll just go to paragraph 25 of his speech where he said, I must confess, I must confess that I am very pained by the recurring disruption to our tertiary education system. And I'm using this Independence Day celebration to reiterate my call for the striking academic staff union of universities to return to the classroom while assuring them to deal with their contending issues within the limits of the scarce resources available, uh, he says. Uh, that's number one. So uh, he also went on to say that, that his administration has made appreciable progress mm. in redressing the, the issues of ASU mm. uh, that have been lingering over 11 years. Yeah. You know, um, But if you look at, look at the agreements from 2009 mm. and the renegotiated agreement of 2019, mm. uh, the federal government has not paid uh, any money as far as revit revitalization is concerned. Yeah. Of the 1.3 trillion naira, they've only uh, paid 200 billion naira. That was uh, back in, I think, before, during the time of Jonathan. Yeah. So if he says that they've made a appreciable progress, what does that mean? <laughs> Okay, so um, I think the president <laughs> understands what he meant by... It, 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 <laughs> is, it, is it disconnected, do you feel? I, I don't think he's disconnected. Um, I think um, he, he, his disposition seems to be sort yourself out. Um, there, are, there, are bigger, there are bigger things <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned about in some sort. Um, I, I, I don't think they're taking uh, the educational problem seriously. I'm not sure they are concerned about it, okay? Uh, because if you find how much money moves to other sectors, maybe security, um, infrastructure, and the rest, it, it just shows you where I think they are paying attention to, okay? Um, but in these other areas, they're like, oh, it's us, so we'll, we'll find a way to deal with, with it, okay? Oh, no, it's education. We can always patch it around. So I think it's just the commitment of the government with regards to education. I'm not sure they see it as a crisis yet. <laughs> well, that, that's because, I mean, some of the things they're asking for, for instance, visitation panel, there's been no visitation panel over 10 years, or almost 10 years through any federal university mm -hmm. from the federal government even going to see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And um, so he says, he, so you're saying that you don't feel he's sincere in what he's saying that if he was paying then that They've even made progress. You don't feel it's sincere at all. So if you, you know, certain statements are political. <laughs> Some statements are just thrown out there. But if you want to do a critical analysis, I run a research and development company. So if you want to deal with the underground data, you can see that there's crisis in that sector. Okay. Now, sometimes I, when I speak on issues like this, I always like to draw a balance. I, I, I hope at some point we'll also get to the responsibility on the university angle. <laughs> okay. But for now, we're talking about government. <laughs> okay. What is government's responsibility? Government needs to show more commitment to this system. We're already stretched as a country with regards how we are designed. That's another discussion for another day. How, no, but, yeah. but I think that we can actually start from there <laughs> because I, I'm wondering if we look at the system, and it's a good thing that we're 62 today. Yeah. It just gives us the opportunity to go back to the drawing board and yeah. look at where we have come from, yeah. what exactly we're doing right and what we're not doing right and where we can get it right. And yeah. so um, we know that the, the, you know, the structure that we're practicing, the educational system, uh, the 6334 formula, do you think that's what the problem is? <laughs> or the problem is with funding? Uh, just like you have tried to mention that there's no attention to it because yeah. there's been complaint about budgetary allocation every other time. So yeah. I I'd like you to share your thoughts. Where exactly lies the problem with our educational system? Okay, so in design thinking, there's something you call a wicked problem. Wicked problem means where you're trying to solve one, 
you might end up creating a bigger problem on the larger chain. So we're going to look at the value chain. It's a long value chain that involves students, parents, lecturers, and government. Okay, so picking one person as a little as the major problem will dampen the effect of the other people. So for, take for instance, what's the quality of learning to start with? How much can government really do to optimize the quality of learning in schools? How much investment can government really give? How can government monitor that the money given is spent on the things that we say we want to spend the money on, for instance? Okay, so it's a full value chain. So one of the things I think we need to uh, redesign is how we quickly compare ourselves to international countries. You hear us say, oh, go to the UK. Their education system is great. How much of those schools in the UK do government still fund, for instance? But if you try that in Nigeria, maybe the University of Lagos will be paying 750,000 Naira school fees. <laughs> Or maybe one million naira per semester. How many people can afford that? That's another problem. So you see, it's a, it's a full value chain. So I think the first thing we must ask ourselves, I'm a consultant. If I come to your company and you tell me, oh, my company is not producing money, what must I do? I'll first tell you, how does your company operate? Are you making sales with the way you are operating? No, we're not making so much money. So what do we do? We unbundle. We redesign. Government can no longer fund. What can we do from inside? Oh, it's top down heavy. Government are opening more and they're opening more schools. More schools are being converted to universities. We are not funding what is on ground. We are converting schools to universities. You are taking a teacher college, you are converting to university. <laughs> okay? So the question is, the way we are designed is too top-down heavy. Government cannot manage everything. So we need to start redesigning from there and saying, the way we are structured, can it really work? So what, what should the proper structure be? So this, I think, people don't like to hear. <laughs> but the schools have to find a way to begin to raise funds. Okay, either by creating internal <laughs> fund generating systems, begin to create research. If you go abroad, certain schools are opening labs, business labs. Most of the vaccines you see that were used pre COVID were created by universities. That income goes to university. You know, so we need to unbundle to and try to find solutions and ways that we can engage. So you're looking yeah. at uh, uh, you know schools, you know, weaning themselves off of government funding. I, I think we should find a way to do that. <laughs> when, 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 when that when that affect the so-called common man, proverbial common man, on the street, um, some people will argue to death that Nigeria can afford free education or at least free tuition, mm. like it is in Germany mm. and some of the other, uh, other oil-producing countries, mm. um, that Nigeria can afford it, even though the, the, the numbers are not too encouraging. They're really yeah. bleak in terms of even whether we can afford to fund a budget. We can't. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, but people feel the nation has no business asking students to pay for everything or the investors to be on their own. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, let's got a welfare aspect of this as well. Now, you know I said, you know I spoke about wicked problems. But I want to ask, when the world is education free? <laughs> Somebody's paying. Somebody's paying. You look at America, for instance, now. People are now campaigning on forgiving student loans. <laughs> it's, it's now a campaign point. Oh, if, if, you, if you put me in power, I'll forgive student loans. Because people pay loans. Okay, so, so, uh, so there are many discussions in that poll. But the discussion is, for instance, must everybody go to university? Some people have that school of thought. If you make early education solid, we make it beautiful. People can at least go from primary school to the SS3. After SS3, let the person do what he wants to do, <laughs> for instance. So there's too many, there's a lot of argument in that. So, but design says we must find a way to make it work for us. No, Papa, why haven't we found a way with all of the resources that we have? Because I, I don't know if there's any country or an individual that will wake up and say they have enough money. Bonaboy sang a song and said no. Dangote himself is looking for money. Yeah. Right? So I mean, money will never be enough. No, line, I, I line, line for us. <laughs> Just one line, one line for us. No, my <laughs> point here is money will never be enough for an individual or a country. Yep. I'm not even sure because you think that when you have an extra one million, mm. then you think that one million it's okay. You need an extra one million. Yep. You never get to that point. Exactly. So I have never heard any country in the world that wakes up to say, mm. hey, we have enough resource. Yeah. We have uh, funds. We have what it takes. Yeah. Right? To fund anything. Yeah. And so so I don't think that that's the issue because we have resources. But over time, if you look at how much we have managed it, uh, some professor would say that, you know, we're an Owen Bear government. Uh, Owen Bear, you know the system already. You throw in money, you chunk it, 
government. It's a party kind of government. Mm -hmm. Look at how much we're spending. I mean, look at the cost of running government. Every time our budget, how much we allocate, you know, to the, uh, you know, the expenditure. You talk about the capital project and the recurrent, uh, you know, expenditure. So it's a thing. I think that if you are saying the privatization at 62 should be the solution to education sector, it would therefore widen the gap between the rich and the poor over time. And that's what it would be. We're even only talking about the tertiary institution. We're not also looking at, you know, the secondary and the primary school. That's also a big issue. Why is it that at this point in time, Nigeria, as a giant of Africa, we can't even say there's a free education across board for the entire, I mean, we're talking about from primary to secondary level. Let's even achieve that, first of all. And then we begin to think about, okay, tertiary, what's important to go to so a higher me, institution. So let me give an example. Are you aware that your primary schools have been monitored in Lagos, for instance, by the local I government? I mean, that's one, that's, one, that's <laughs> one state out of. How many states do we have no, in Nigeria? No, no, I'm just trying to say that. Do you, are you aware that your primary school in Lagos is being managed by local government? I'm just trying to explain to you the power of a design. Now, if primary schools are being managed by local governments, who say that they don't have access to their own funds? What funds are they using to develop the local the primary schools? So this is my concept. This is, my, this is why I talk about design a lot. If you give somebody four billion naira in a poorly structured system, you will not be able to account for how the financial flow takes place. Because we are blaming one side of the system, we need to look at it across the value chain. The stakeholders across the value chain must come together and ask themselves, how do we want this thing to be structured? Okay, go around Lagos and look at your primary schools, or go around the state or your state. Look at the state of the primary schools. Those primary schools are constitutionally meant to be run by local governments. Our question with the primary schools: so what, what finances do local governments have to use to run the primary schools? So I'm not blaming and saying provision is the only way. I'm just I'm trying to emphasize the power of design. We must look at how we are designed and ask ourselves the way we are designed. Are we able to drive quality education with the way we are designed? All right. Um, I, I want us to look at the um, uh, the, 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 the the content yeah. of our curriculum because we, that's very important that's as well. <laughs> you know, Mercy asked if we're you know six three three four has never worked. You know, it's in the country; it's not even worked at all. Mm. I remember one of my um, my uncles who had uh, the, you know to import some or who was who was to install some equipment that they in, in, imported. The thing was left to rot under the sun for years and it all went bad you know but but look let's look at the content and the curriculum and the uh the emphasis on 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 a degree um in some countries like in the german system where you have what you call the ausbildung which is a sort of a vocational training yeah. arrangement where you can leave your high school and go get trained in a skill and while you're being trained in that skill the government will give you a stipend you get paid be it carpentry, be it welding, be it uh, tailoring, be it nursing, whatever you want to do. And then they uh, encourage companies to employ. Mm. Um, we, everybody wants to have a degree in this country. And you and I know that um, not be everybody where they you know, uh, speak, uh, speak English. You yeah. know, some people can't even express themselves okay. in the university. Yeah. Why is that? And so w w what's this? And you talked about some state-owned you know, polytechnics, you know, government institutions, teacher training colleges are being converted to universities. <laughs> so, so the government can look good. It should know. be a real thing, by the way. You know, so, so yeah. what's, what, where did we get it wrong in terms of our pension for having a degree that isn't really producing skilled people? And, yes, to, yes. and to even add to that, you know, the government is also encouraging by creating more universities. I mean, we, let's talk about having, he's mentioned, vocational institutions yeah. as well. So government is also encouraging that, you know, attitude of saying we need to have more universities. The issue is government. So of let, course. Let me give an example. Have you seen a, 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 a job employment <laughs> letter or advert? Minimum two to university graduate. University graduate, university graduate. So, most of the time, now this is not to defend government, of course, the government have their own issues. But as a people, we must reorientate our minds. If I have a company and I make the criteria for employment not to own a university degree, but you must have done case study, why? You must have a vocational level training, you must have this, this. you will force the system to adjust to the new realities. But if you keep demanding it, Parents keep saying, oh, no, uh, my, so my child will not be a degree holder. No, 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 my child must be, go to a university and have a BSc in. You will keep having that kind of environment. 
Okay, so that's why when I talk about value chain, I can't just isolate one person. We must have a total reorientation system. Okay, now, certain states in Nigeria, for instance, are beginning to up their vocational training schools. There's an abandoned technical college in the major southwest state. Massive carpentry and plumbing. Abandoned. Because people will not go there. They were even paying people to attend. Parents like, no, so they will say my child is a carpenter. No, my child must become a BSc. So it's, 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 it's more holistic than that, okay? I think all of us must be involved in it. You must begin to pay attention to those who don't have BSc. You must begin to pay attention to those people who are mechanics, for instance, now. It's a slight on them. Oh, what do you do? I'm a mechanic. Eh, is that what you do? You mean you didn't go to school? <laughs> okay, so these things are also environmental. They are sociological. So I don't think we should just look at them from the angle of, oh, government does not want to. No, but, but, but the reason that would be is because if you look at it, let's be realistic. We can't take the, 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 the bulk of the issue or the blame. I mean, this is not a blame game. We're saying that Everyone is responsible. Oh, of course. But you don't, I don't know a system where you have feeding coming from. It comes from down to, you know, they say top, be bottom to top. It's, you know, from top to down, right? That's how it should trickle down. And that's why it's, it's in the constitution that uh, the security and the welfare of the people should be the concern of government. We're saying that you've talked about design. Why can we have a system? Up until now, we have jam. There's going to be another jam, right? Uh, 2022 is almost over. So in 2023, I'm sure people would start preparing to write another German examinations when we know that the universities have been, you know, away for almost seven months plus counting. And we, we're not even sure when, you know, the strike will be over. So why, why don't we, you know, relook at the entire system? You know, look at what's working and what's not working. Um, um, because you, you're blaming the people who no, are putting no. criteria saying, okay, you need a BSc for a job and what have you. Because, you know, it's, it's the system that has been channeled from the beginning, from the top. Who, who created the system? Of course, who creates the system? Our constitution is a referendum. Our constitution is a referendum. No. Uh, we will... <laughs> Kofi, let's not right, even right. get into so, this so, argument. Uh, but you um, know that I'm not sure we want to go there. Let's, <laughs> let's we, we have to go. We have to yeah. go. There's a lot to talk about, you know, but um, we have to wrap it up right now. Uh, Oludari Akin Laja, uh, CEO of OAR uh, uh, ND Company. He's a transformation strategist, and that was really evident. <laughs> what you said. There's a lot to unpack as far as Nigeria's education is concerned. Yeah. Uh, but thank you very much for your time. I think maybe it's good you didn't um, knock us soon. And so you can you can move around safely because <laughs> everybody is, is up in arms against the government regarding that. But I think it's good to balance, and that's what you brought yeah. to this conversation. Thank you so much. For Thank, your time. You. Thank you. And happy October one. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. All right. All right. Up next, we have more uh, right now. Of course, um, we'll take a break, and uh, we have something special to play for you in between. And when we return uh, from our break, we'll be having a discussion on the uh, political and. Um, uh, elections in Nigeria, looking at the forthcoming elections and politics with our guest, Femi Dagunro, Joe Femi Dagunro, will be back with us. Please stay.